Dres Gagat snobbed Trani Meoredris Towers to Mars, Romelitsi Saubreps Democratic Crisis Global Urat, Rogor Shadlebaios, Feminist Uripasuhi, Da Rogor Sitsit S. Crisis Global Uri Molena, Da Sakartolot, Sakartos Meore Respublica, Princip Shit, how we see Da Sabamida, Nayam Crisisia. Tom says, <laughs> Arnish no simas from train Arsha Guizlia will up Aragot, Cartul Democratiaze, Cansacotrabit, Irveli Respublic is Mohmobit, Muhedavat, I am Ponisada, Grisisuli with Arabisa. Es Sak it hirat omats Gadaut with a throw, Gavita, Krishna Nyaris, Memarts Heneact, Evist Indo, Tidanda, Vinaidan. Es anti democratiuli coalizia to global realiansi es Italian momzlaure buria da Italian zlieri amitumet es global ur samkrachi sadat irikiti ene ben de koloniur anti koloniur ritorika sakutari autoritarismis kasad zlieri blad da ay am politiki sad armoe blad da shesabami sad shishi gakht adres saubrob nem tawari. Shades of the Hana Medrovis, Gamsas Relia Mutsia, Gagabit Rog, Zalo, Helisuplava Sashinia, Zalo Plavista Arguis, Chuanguashinia, Democrat is Chichia Mochenis, Da Princip Shi, Akenega on Dinare, Autorit Arulis, Ogadat, Zalebi, Regime B, Oltis, Stilo Benrom, Soret Shishsta, Putzno, Sakutari, Polit Technologia. Da I am global aspect. I am Shishi, Sisa Obrovska, Aida Krishnani, Romanitaris, Rogorsky, Memarts, Hene Activisti, Da Isaris, Erterti Gamona, Glissihma, Shades, Labait, Quas, Aram Hold, Indo, Charmet, Global, Sam Hachi, Romelitz, Ukrainis, Ria, Actiurim, Hardacheria, Hardamcheria, Da Agritic Eps, Quat Rusatis, Shedrasta, that's. Nishnolonia, Ekidan Gaum Dinare Rom, Chuan Hedout, Rogor Act Seven, Manam de Tula Paraket, Autorit Aruli Regime B, Saubroben, Luri Versal or two multipolar rules, Sam Aroebze, Da Gulis Moben, Imperial Multipolar Obas, Da Am Olapris Catalyst in a bit, Nishnolonia Rom, Dawina Hotro, Esara Risinam Dulashi Multipolar Oba, Da Aseve, East Rom, Global or Samkrets, Samkrets, Romos at Twitonax, Esetizalo, Plebrivi Gamot, Stila Babishora, Imperial Pormatia Bisponze, Gansa Kutrabit, Unda, Esmodes, Chuen Contexti, Rasnishnaus, Rusetis, Quat Imperia, Missis Hadaswa, Politic Economic Orif, Quat Gansreula Babit, Da Rogor Nishnolania, Solidaroba, Da is it Dreskawi kept Halbat, Ras, Sair Tohazebiak, some global or ultra memor journey alliances? The Wipikrot, Discussis, Imaze, Rogor Shadleba, Aseve, Solidarobis, Hidebi, Gawabat, I am Swadeswa, context depten. Yeah, so uh, it's been very, very uh, illuminating for me and um, to be here. And uh, to be discussing these issues um, in this part of the world, because I think that these conversations, uh, which we've been hearing for the past two days here, um, in the shadow of uh, the Russian invasion on, of Ukraine, um, I think that these conversations are not heard in my part of the world, and uh, which is why I feel very privileged to be here talking to you. Um, what I want to talk about today, uh, let me reveal right at the beginning, um, that what I'm going to suggest, and I'm going to try and show you that, is that there is more than just a collection of various democratic, uh, sorry, various domestic dictatorships, which means a variety of national authoritarian regimes. I'm saying that it is more than that now because I think that what we can see in the 
illuminated in uh, the light of the Ukraine resistance is that there is a global anti-democratic project. And these various authoritarian anti-democratic politics, anti-democratic political leaders and regimes and forces, they are increasingly planned in a very planned way coming together to speak the same ideological language. Their geopolitical unity may be uneven, um, although they are making attempts to build that up as well. But ideologically, this is a project that is attacking the idea that democracy means something that broadly you and I can understand here. You are from Georgia. I am from India. Um, you don't, you're needing an interpreter to understand what I'm saying. I'm speaking in English, which is uh, not my own language either. And yet when I say democracy, when um, so many other speakers here said democracy, you kind of know what I'm saying. Likewise, if we hear Iran's women shouting the slogan, woman, life, freedom, we kind of know what they mean by freedom. And we certainly know what they mean by unfreedom. Across the world, these slogans are able to resonate and we are able to understand each other uh, in various countries, in various languages and contexts, because we do agree that collectively through our struggles, through our mutual arguments, we have managed to create some common understanding of democratic principles. That doesn't mean that it's the same, it means the same thing everywhere. The point is that you can have a principle and that principle can then be interpreted to include sections which have not yet been included, right? Um, so if you say the right, uh, you know, feminist rights, uh, you have a situation now where that doesn't just mean women in a certain, in the way in which gender was understood, say, uh, you know, uh, 50 years ago. It means something uh, different now where what we mean by gender has changed. And any uh, principle of democracy, if the principle of democracy is that we are going to respect uh, and uh, you know, acknowledge the dignity of a human being to live their life and live their truth. And we have to create a society where such, uh, you know, where, where people can live without uh, being subjected to the power either of the state or of social majorities. So then you have to adapt that idea of democracy, that principle, to accommodate uh, you know, what we understand of the various uh, places on the gender spectrum today, that people are not just classed into men and women, and we have to adjust that. So that has changed, but the principle broadly remains the same, and we need that. So what is happening is that these anti-democratic regimes, and I'll give you examples from Vladimir Putin, I'll give you examples from uh, Xi Jinping, from Narendra Modi in India, uh, from Trump, um, and you will be able to supply me, I'm sure, with any number of other examples. And what they are doing is that they are attacking the idea that there is such a thing as democracy, which can be understood by people and, and have meaning and relevance for people across the world. So they are saying, no, there's no such thing as universal democracy. That is all Western colonial imperialist uh, nonsense. And the majority of people across the world, but also the majority of the people in the Western countries, they are all oppressed by this uh, handful of Western liberal elites forcing their values on everyone. And now there is a movement for liberation. So Russia's invasion of Ukraine is a movement for liberation from uh, Western elite values. Likewise, uh, they are saying that um, across the world there are these movements. You can see them in India with the rise of Hindu supremacist politics and so on. 
And they are also saying that, say, Trumpism in America, or Meloni in Italy, or in France also you have similar movements, Brexit in the UK. They are saying those are all movements for liberation from this globalist ideology. And uh, you might think, how does that work for Trump? Because after all, it's a Western country. So what is all this about Western elites? But that's the point. You know, when Trump says America first, he says that America does not bear a burden to, it doesn't owe anything to the parts of the world it has hurt. It doesn't owe anything to anybody. Uh, and you don't interfere with me. And I should be free to do whatever I like here. So make America great again is about making America racist again, to make racism OK again, and all of that. And he does that by saying that there are elites, certain elites in the world uh, and in America. They are a global elite. And they are the ones who are forcing these, uh, uh, you know, their very strange values on us. And we have to reject that. So you're already seeing that there's a common theme here where a common language is being spoken, where liberal, Western, elite, global. These are the buzzwords, universal. These are the buzzwords, and these are being attacked. So we, who are in movements who are seeking to expand what we mean by democracy and strengthen it, and defend whatever we have won of such democratic rights, we need to start thinking about how are we going to resist this? And to me, where I am in India, I know that's not your experience here, but to me in India, it was a very lonely moment to f see this, you know, this anti-democratic project clearly in the light of what happened in 2022 in Ukraine, and to realize that no one around me was willing to see it. It was there plain as, you know, plain as anything, right in front of my nose. I could see it, I could hear it, but no one around me was willing to say that they could see it and hear it. And one of the reasons was, I felt, that when I could hear Putin's speeches, each of them, during a war, every speech of his during the war would rant against the imperialists, the West, you know, colonialism and imperialism and so on and so forth. But in every one of those speeches, the example he would give. So all my friends and comrades and colleagues were hearing him say, oh, you know, the West is hypocritical. It talks of democracy, but in the name of democracy, in the name of rule of law, it has brought all this plunder and so on. All of which is correct. But when he would give you an example of what he means by resisting that in Russia or anywhere in the world today, they seem to switch off and shut their ears and, you know, shut their eyes and their ears. Because the example he was giving was that the Western elites are enforcing, forcing us to abandon our family values and start accepting all this Satanism, this ugly, dirty, LGBTQ, uh, you know, what is all this, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, two, uh, a family with two moms, two dads, what is all this? I mean, he was quoting J.K. Rowling over there in his speeches. And um, it, is, uh, it is crazy that no one was willing to listen to that. And I think part of the reason is because um, a lot of the democratic movements in uh, my part of the world, certainly, but I think on the left more generally everywhere, there is a tone deafness when it comes to gender. Uh, so you find a lot of uh, very, very great uh, gurus on the left. Uh, you know, take your pick, name the biggest names you know. And you will find that most of them, especially on the, you know, Marxist or Leninist or anarchist left and all of that, the, the word feminism or the word, uh, you know, uh, gender or the word uh, LGBTQIA rights or queer rights or any of that, that doesn't cross their lips. It's generally, they'll say, if you ask them, why aren't you talking about it, they'll say, yeah, yeah, of course we are for it. But the point is, it is not a matter of emphasis. And so it's kind of not so important. So if this guy is ranting about that in a wartime speech, you can still go on saying, no, 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 actually he's bothered by NATO. But 
NATO has nothing to do with, uh, you know, a uh, 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 gay parade. Why is he talking about a gay parade when he's attacking Ukraine? Why? Because there is this anti-democratic project and the attack on Ukraine is a part of that. Um, and the, uh, so I'm, uh, that is my main argument here. But I will be giving you uh, some examples from where I come from in India. Because that's another reason why I could feel it with such urgency. So I think that uh, what we are seeing here is not just an ideological convergence among these anti-democratic forces, I, which we'll see examples of, but it is actually something where the questions of democracy, of climate justice, of saving the planet, of social justice, economic justice, they all kind of come together in our fight against this project. Because this project is not just an ideological one. It is no coincidence that the backers of this project, without exception, wherever you look, you're going to find it. They are backed by some of the biggest hydrocarbon oligarchs there are, including in India. And those hydrocarbon oligarchies and oligarchs, they have connections with each other. Um, and uh, this is a system, therefore, that threatens uh, democracy and it threatens our whole existence as, uh, as a planet. Um, so understanding geopolitics, politics, and political economy, and connecting those dots instead of saying, all right, when it comes to politics, we are going to talk about democracy. When it comes to geopolitics, we are going to talk about the West versus the rest, and uh, so on. But, but being able to connect these is what I think is important. So in India, what you're seeing is that, uh, what you're seeing elsewhere as well, but I'll give you examples from India, that these forces are conflating anti-colonial with anti-democratic and anti-modern. Because they're saying that democracy is basically just a colonial construct and nothing else. And uh, what are the implications of that? So let me uh, give you an instance that Modi, Narendra Modi, who's the Prime Minister of India, he belongs to an organization which was born in 1925 called the RSS. Um, it is, uh, it's a Hindu supremacist fascist organization. I use the word fascist quite deliberately because it was inspired by uh, 20th century European fascisms. Um, so that organization says that Indian constitution, you see India's constitution at the time when India was independent after about 200 years of struggle against British colonialism, there was a choice. And there was a Hindu supremacist element which was pushing for the idea that uh, basically any idea of individual, uh, demo individual rights and a liberal democratic constitution is a Western thing. Throw it away, and in the name of uh, you know, authentic Indianness, what you need is a Hindu nation based on a certain interpretation of what it means to be Hindu based on caste hierarchy and gender hierarchy. And of course, an exclusion of non-Hindus, which means Muslims and all of that. But uh, the Indian constitution makers basically rejected that idea and uh, very explicitly said, uh, the person who was the head of the chair chairing committee of the constitution, uh, he was a liberator of the most oppressed castes in India, uh, Ambedkar. And he said, look, uh, we've discussed this, and we refuse to accept the village and the village caste council as the unit of the constitution. We are not going to do that. The unit of the constitution for us is going to be the individual, which means that what the constitution means by liberty is going to be protecting that individual from the power of the state and from social majorities. I cannot tell you how empowering that has been because that is not India's social reality in most places. So uh, for women, for queer persons, for uh, people in transgressive uh, relationships uh, like intercaste or interfaith or same-sex relationships, um, it has been incredibly empowering to go back and say, we are validated by this constitution. Not only do we exist and we are born with these rights, 
but we have won for ourselves a constitution that recognizes us. So the constitution has been something that they've taken and fought with, right? They fought alongside it. But now you're having ideologues of this government saying that every government before Narendra Modi's government, uh, before 2014, was basically this alien uh, westernized elite which was ruling. And uh, their governance was based on these liberal values which are alien to what this guy called the genius of India. Genius of India is caste and family and state and guru and festival. That was um, this ideologue's uh, article. And so Nehru, as well as the left and everybody, basically anybody who is uh, part of democratic movements, they are just trying to divide the country. Um, so what does this mean? There are many examples we can give, but I want the first image on my uh, screen, please. Yeah. Um, so what you may have heard that Modi, um, you'll give me an idea of the time. Uh, yeah. yeah. So uh, Narendra Modi, you may have heard, is planning to change the country's name. So uh, you may have heard that you know India is the name you know. That he is proposing that the name should be just Bharat, B H A R A T. The thing is that, uh, let me first get this out of the way, that the name right now is actually both. The Indian constitution uh, names the country as the Republic of Bharat, that is, Republic of India, that is Bharat. So Bharat is the word used in a many, many Indian languages, interchangeably for India. No one in India really thinks about them as separate names. But, Modi is saying, I'm going to delete that India from there so that it'll just be Republic of Bharat. What is he saying when he's doing that? For one thing, I want to go back to Modi's, uh, you know, the, 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 one of the founders of this uh, fascist organization, Golwalkar. Um, so he says, why should the country be named Hindu? And he, this was, he was writing in the 1960s, and he said, India is, of course, an alien name. I don't want that, that's all westernized and it's Muslim because India comes from the Persian word for the Sindhu river, the Sindh river which is the Indus river and all of that. So he said that all I don't want. He said Bharat is okay because it comes from Sanskrit, but the problem is that most people in India use it in a common parlance, in common sense to mean everyone, you know, Hindus as well as Muslims and Christians and Parsis and everyone. So that won't do. We need the name to be Hindu nation and nothing else because we need to make it clear that we don't consider anyone who is not Hindu to be a part of the nation. So he was very clear about that, that he was upset that people in India use Bharat and India interchangeably to mean all Indian citizens across faiths and communities and all of that. So the same problem persists today for Modi. So what Modi is doing it is he is taking it gradually. Chop off India now, chopping off Bharat will come tomorrow, and the third will be chop off the Republic, and then you'll have a Hindu nation. But he's doing this in the name of anti-colonial authenticity, you see, um, which is not true, because in fact his organization didn't participate at all in the anti-colonial struggle. So uh, image two, please. So, um, I, you know, just to give you an example of what this India-Bharat thing means for women in India, for instance. You, uh, is it possible to move to the next one? So, uh, in 2012, when there was a huge anti-rape uh, protest in India, it started in Delhi and then it, uh, it switched over. I mean, it, it spread all over the country. And at that time, when we were on the streets, you know, talking about sexual violence and women's autonomy, um, at that time, uh, Mohan Bhagwat, who was the head of the same organization, the fascist Hindu supremacist organization, he made a statement that said, rapes happen in India, not in Bharat. What did he mean by that? He meant that India represents, you know, basically these Western, liberal, feminist values which allow women to dress skimpily and have boyfriends and this girl who got raped, she was out with her boyfriend in a bus at night after having seen a movie, all tick, 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 you know, all the wrong things. So he was saying a coded thing to say that where the caste and gender hierarchies, that is the Indian values are maintained, Bharatiya values are maintained, there you won't have rapes. And of course that's complete 
nonsense, of course, but the point is that uh, that is what it will mean if uh, India is, you know, accepted to be this, uh, this uh, Hindu nation. That's what it will mean in terms of Indian constitutional values of, uh, you know, liberty being replaced by this kind of Hindu supremacist uh, anti-feminism. So um, now I want to immediately bring you to a global linkage. You just heard, you know, the fascists in my part of the world. Now let's listen to one who's your neighbor. Uh, third, third, please. Yeah. So this is um, Alexander Dugin. It's a long quote. Don't worry too much. I will tell you what this guy is saying. Um, he came to India. He's come to India many times, by the way. He also goes to China. He is a common connection between uh, a lot of American, American, European, as well as Indian Chinese uh, fascisms. Okay, so Dugin uh, he wrote an op-ed, an article in a very well-known, uh, fairly liberal journal in India. Okay, and in this he said about Modi's being elected a second time as prime minister. He said that, oh, this is all restoring. It's a, it's a sign that India's cultural, geo, uh, religious, and geopolitical greatness is being restored. And this is basically uh, showing you that India is rejecting these uh, so-called universality of Western values and uh, basically uh, you know, restoring its own system of values. And he very clearly says what he means by this. He says, that uh, this is multipolarity because one pole means it's just this American pole. Democracy, values, li you know, li liberty, all that is uh, American unipolarity, Western unipolarity. Multipolarity means that every civilization can just, you know, you can define anything and call it democracy. So democracy will be emptied of any meaning that people struggling all over the world have put into it. Take it all out and then you can just use it as a sign, stick it anywhere and call whatever you like, you you know, you can call racism democracy. After all, you can say the majority wants that. So he says that uh, this is a return to civilizational foundations of each non-Western civilization and a rejection of liberal democracy and human rights ideology. In another interview in Delhi, he talked about how we need alliances with the Muslim world, with Hindus, with China, etc., etc., um, to overthrow the present order of things, and what does he describe that as? Human rights, anti hierarchy political correctness, and then, you know, beast, antichrist, etc. And please pay attention to that last word, Kali Yuga. Kali Yuga is a word which is basically from Sanskrit, but if you, um, in a very broad usage, okay, I'm, I'm going into the way in which it's commonly understood. Uh, it is a term, it's a caste-based term, which basically means uh, it's catastrophic modernity. So, you know, in Hindi cinema of some years ago, if a woman uh, kind of uh, behaved in a transgressive way, then her mother-in-law would say, oh, ghor kaliyuga gaya, which means, oh my God, the kaliyug is with us. So kaliyug basically means that the hierarchies and the rules of caste and gender behavior are overturned. The castes which are supposed to be laboring castes are ruling. And the whole caste system, there's inter, intermixture. So the specific word used in some of the texts, Hindu texts of uh, long ago, is um, which it means miscegenation, mixture of caste. How does that happen? Because women are free and they go around basically sleeping around across castes. And so, oh my God, this is a calamity. Now, I will also tell you that it's not, you know, this is an ideological statement, not just by Dugin, not just by Hindu. Uh, cinema, Hindi cinema, or Hindu scripture, or whatever. Because in real life, and I've written about this uh, in my book, um, the, you have women, for instance, in 19th century India, extremely, con you know, con from conservative families, who teach themselves to read and write, although it's forbidden, although it's forbidden, they teach themselves to read and write, and one, uh, one woman like this secretly teaches herself to read and write. And when she hears, she says, you know, I hear people saying that girls are now going to school. Uh, I was not allowed to go to school. Girls are now going to school. And they're saying the Kaliyug is with us because this is happening. And I say, blessed, blessed Kaliyug that 
girls will be able to go to school, okay? So uh, this is basically uh, what's happening, and you have uh, Dugin doing this. I'll quickly use the few minutes I have left to tell you a couple of other examples. So Xi Jinping says, okay, uh, you know, Islam in China has to be Chinese in orientation. He also says values of freedom, democracy, and human rights represent Western civilization. And image four and five, uh, quickly, if we can go, just four briefly, and then five. So basically, China has this uh, white paper which says human rights, you know, on human rights. And they describe, they say human rights is just happiness. And democracy is good governance. And the Western model of democracy leads to so much uh, social disorder and social disruption. And so for social stability, you need the Chinese model of democracy, which is all about, you know, people being happy and well governed. There's no scope, remember, for people basically questioning the government, protesting individual rights of protection from state power. None of that. Get rid of all of that because that's all bourgeois liberal rubbish. You, uh, you basically use Chinese civilizational democracy means. Um, so image six and seven and eight, one after the other. So six, uh, six. Uh, so these, are, these three are examples of Russian embassy social media posts. Uh, the first two are from Canada, and the third is from Dhaka. So, you know, take a look. Uh, are you able to move to the next one? Yeah. Um, so these are posts which says, look at this one. So there's a, there's a pride flag, and it's crossed out, and it says, you know, family is whatever, whatever. So this is a uh, Russian embassy in Canada, OK? Uh, blue tick and all of that, whatever. Image 7, the next one. Uh, this is also Canada. It says that it's, you know, Canada and other states, these are supporting the new liberal agenda. Uh, yeah, uh, new liberal agenda. Uh, and they are distorting reality by conflating the concepts of individual sexual preferences and universal human rights. So, you know, gender and uh, your, uh, you know, it's, those are preferences and these are rights. So they're making that distinction. And uh, the third image here is the Russian embassy in Dhaka. Next one. So look at that. It's an amazing uh, look at that. There's a swastika. There's the American flag. Uh, uh, you know, and they're, 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 uh, um, with everything is a pride flag. They're all bombs about to bomb uh, the, the Russian way of life and uh, civilizations of all the, all the countries. It says ortho, uh, Christian orthodoxy, traditional Islam, Judaism, Hinduism, Buddhism, all of that. So basically what I'm trying to say is that this, uh, this language is not just a fascist language inside Russia. It's an attempt to uh, reach out to the whole world as an organizing principle for anti-democratic thought. So I won't go into uh, more details. Uh, we can talk in the discussion, but just go through the next images. So image nine, the next one. So this is a new book by Ian Garner called The Z Generation. And it's very worth reading because you can see the language being used by Russia's youth who are uh, radicalized into uh, Z fascism. So they refer to Ukraine as Ukro Nazi Satanist faggots. So basically, if you see all those words, they are words which are all, uh, you know, it looks like a, you know, what is this mixture of words? But it makes sense for them that to be non Russian, uh, which means to be Ukrainian, to be gay, to be, uh, you know, is to be Nazi, is to be Satanist. So to be Nazi is to be Satanist. It should make no sense, and yet it does. And yet even to my friends on the left in my part of the world and in so much of the world, they can't hear this and say, hello, something's wrong over here. I think something is deeply wrong and dangerous happening here. So uh, there's that. And then the rest of it, basically, I leave you here. I just want to say uh, at the end uh, that there's a whole bit which I have written. There's an article, the next, uh, next couple of images you'll see. So the second, my latest article, and I can give a link to that. I've basically talked about this political economic context, and there's a lot where these oligarchies are working together. And if you want to criticize Biden, the next one also, uh, if you want to criticize the, the so-called democratic world, uh, the leaders of the democratic world, you should criticize them not for opposing Russia or supporting Ukraine, but for, not, for appeasing Putin, for appeasing Modi, for 
enabling these hydrocarbon oligarchies, which in turn enable these authoritarianisms, and for not taking them seriously. That is what we should be attacking them for. I've written about that. So this book has some, this, this article has some references. Next couple of images, just to show you which books I'm asking you to read if you're interested. They're both about this political economic connections. Uh, so this one is about how Britain basically enables all these uh, global oligarchs. And the next one is also by the same guy, and it's on the same theme. Uh, so yeah, I'll end here by saying that uh, my pro proposition is that the anti-democratic project globally, it interprets decolonization as de-democratization. And if that is happening in our name, it's not enough for us, like my friends on the left, to say, Oh, but we don't mean that when we say multipolarity or decoloniality or anti-colonialism or anti-imperialism. We don't mean that. But it's not enough for you not to mean that. What are you doing to acknowledge that they are doing that? They are saying that. What are you doing to challenge their meaning? So our priority has to be, in my opinion, to defend the, uh, you know, to defend at some level, however flawed it is. Flawed liberal democracy and modernity are not something that have come from somewhere, some other planet, or from elites, or from the West. They are things people have fought for and won. These are meanings we have put into these words like democracy and human rights. We have to defend them in order to defend the ground on which uh, we stand and we can fight for a better future. Talian did him at Lopa. It hobbies to his cows need Mogolet Sift says, Saram Kithoff's more picrep thou grip out, met Shazabar theories in other debit, Sheva Jamab de Champs, Hogamo Hmorabit, Gamo Hmorabi Capitas, Gavitas Morsenebas, Ertim Hriv, Talian's interest, or Roim Gagabitats, or Cheney, Geopoliticuri. Egocentrism is my magal hour, I am swa magalitabs da meorem hriv, imga gabitats rom, erti sak on the message, that's medawina hea carisis rom. Democrat is critic as the key arundai was tabu idea shemit or democrat as swades from Hridan, vagriti kept da, or on vagriti kept him is to throw upro met itzala condes hal sam. The instrument is Camo and Episcot, a low plebista elite abyssina of the Upro inclusory was the Upro met Yadamiani moits was mass. Magram is Razet Saubari, a ho, I am ultra memor Jonah Birogor, act seven and sentiments critic is a imadrom, irkit, democratia, chesrudon, the Dawit Ron, Missim Nishnolo Baho, the Esquela Perim Ponzeho, a more org of Shirshedorom, Rogorats Armo Ben Homopobur discourse tweeton. I am Imisatus from Teli Ura Dreba. I am Welshi Brzolat Gadaizar Dosta, Amdos, Amdros, Eskleptocratevi, to Oligarch Vida, Economic Uritz Esrigil, Romos is Chuen, Tschorop, Darches, Halshew Hebeli, the idea she has a Chuenon, Rom Titkos is in its Lian Ravatses. The Titkos is in Ebzuan Ravats did the low plebas, machine of the set, all a peri hellu, hlebeli, urcheva, the shades of above quatro ravats, schema sauita tsaris, hor, imisatisrom, es esrigi, wins ramdenim, erteuleps, argeps, es a hellu hlebeli shav in archinot, damasobashi, half shake, nas illusia, Titkos is in Ebzuan Ravats. Treps da rogorik mne pa esm trebis khatebi. Maglet itkho bis dia erti shaukri bat erti oris sami otri ibadat. Didi matlova anu meseti itkho mekne boda vrat damaklda. Principshi ay bolos kenu nat khmuli ko albat hamts igne bis tesa khelebit. Tkoint kuitram sadrat geopolitikura da saris shet khmule ba shet hamkhme ba. I miss a sahe from a anti democratic Mozrova, catch this and no adli Arabs, Ragat Tipis, a pulley, polit economia, oligarch heavy, am anti democratic Mozrova, such a titkos, as met him Kitsabuleva, Romoga, why not Argi Kneba, I'm Tom Rom, Isajers, titkos, as a peck fleshy. 
liberalism is in our name, the Arsese Arsebulia, I Two Essia, no is Rana, Irat, Saidan, Sadaris, and Dugin, Dugin at the Chamok, all the Darsops, they Karanak, Kaushir, Dugin, Soligar kept on to all the economy as tanky the Arabs. Essie, Biho, anti liberal, Urida, anti democratic, Mengoniro, Peklishat, Kachenilia, the Arab, my joints, Israel, Hoshet Mule, Bissahit. Kamar Jaba, Pirolik Shit, Salian Didi Madloba, Mida Gadagi Hadot, as it signed Erso analysis twist, Ramats, Metz Ragat Sabshi, Tan Saint Erso, Monaco Tabida, Point Abidamanaha, Goni Chemik, it Horagats Nairat, Echmian, but Quensk it Hosats, Imastanta Kashirabitro, I solic is that Yamagalitat, Romat, Sakmaud, Krzelva Dianida, Nuhobis Montal Namdladara, Magram Zalans, Onianic Lavat, Armoa, Imastanta Kashirabitu, Rogori Narchuneben, Autocrat Abi, Zala. Plebas, Swazoka and Ashida. I Zalian Shade Swala is SC, is modeli the project, it has autocrat a B, Modian Heli Suplebas Shida, Shemdeg, Amzala Plebas, Inarchuneben, Gamdina Rekedanro, Meskaba, Democratiuli process a biscuit. Anu Esaris, Democratiola Tauda Pirola, no Democratiola Darche Ulip Tauro Baby, Romlevitz, Ratz Lobis, Ganmolo Bashi, so they sell populist story to Gin Tower Quatamas, Ratz rhetoric it da. Is how they sell Halkis Hardajeris, Chebian, Zalo Plebis, Atawebsha, Magaltad, Victor Urbani, Amisarian, Gargi Magaltia, Asa, Erdogani, Romelmats, Uka Meore de Adidaits, Okerada, Meore de Gadis, Shuashi, I'm Zalo Plebit. The Anu Chemi, Itwam, Santa Kashrebit Haris, from S. Autorit Arabic, Iarian populist, Abi Magram, Essen populist, Abi Mitomarian, Roisi de Birasat Sisin Yashreben, Aris popularly. Anu Armindaro, Chen Mosaklobas, our twat, Am Kotnabis Mosaklobas, our twat, Ragat Agentura, as Araris, Mandamains, no Ketahma with him, Shirosaris, anti democratic project, Romel Chegut, the global or anti democratic project that Ganmichel Tesh Chem to Salian Gasagebia, Upralo, Rodesat, Kitwais Meba. I mocked on democratia, Magram, Democrat is Harris Rishesa Passable, Holdes Kitwark Mara. Masno Daup is Piro, Time Magalta, Rodas Lepeni and Bobstrom, Pranguli, Sam Sahurabi, Prangabis Twista, S. Aris, Sakmod, Snobia and Sakmod, Slieri, Dia, Romosat, Prangi Halhi, Harsucharsta, Sikota by Machir, or Yatas of Hitler's Archonapshi, National Mapfront Magalta, Socialist Candidates, Gadas, Rochmebita, like Ide, Zalian Ahosi, or Helisopleba, Helshi Chai. Rogurunda, Shell of Hassot, Chuen, Chueni, Twasas Risit, Rotsaya, Manti Democratil Projects of Saubrot, is Democrat Uli Agent Ura, Romelitz, Amadamian Sgachnia, Yunen, Ara Liberal Rebi. Took a Democratia Swedzahit, Adamian Bisuplebas, Aichion Helis Supleba, Romelitz, Nuratkanda, Zalian, Bazisura to Saubrot, Smart Ora Democratia, Aichion Helis Supleba, Biromlevitz, Matin Tereceps at Arab and the Tanats is in Tereceps. Anti liberal or interested with a sort of disinterested with a mass and populist of Salo Plebas in Archonus machine. I regret that when I'm process and how his others anti democrat is about celebrist. I am pretty sure I will shake my love. My love, it will promote let to shell of our rick it hockey. I've died that to pass a hot support. I'm Pirosh Didi Madlova. I said to Marsena Bistris. Maybe crop from oil is right. So I'm going to send. I'm going to send. I'm going to go through it. I'm going to choose regions. I'm going to talk to all the different regions. I'm going to see regions. Then that's the same. I'm going to do the process. I'm going to attend. I'm going to go to Azerbaijan. Then I'm going to attend. I'm going to go to Azerbaijan. Chem twist, um, democratia, Rogers Quent quit has so sirteba, um, then so that's so drought, so then neoliberalism, then neoliberal or democratia, Gox Tresta, Chem to San Luis Arik Navarro, Hitzebot, Sadrats, democratia, democratia, Aris Acta, Achla, um, Sam Suharod, Asetimot, Sam Lobitam. 
چون مرتالی یک آیت رت هست کوی ترای نمی سگا وی کرا اونا داو برندت ساز ایساب است و گنده آکدان گاه تاوی سپل بادا میت آسیب پیکر پرو این چون شم تقویشیت دام پیوریم کل واری کل است که دست دام اسم گنیارو راغت ساق آدمی آشیت دام کل واشیت سری شم برونه با میسک این را چون شم تقویشیت سای ساکارتولوس دک اوک اسیس رگیانی سراغت داو برند سیم پیروالد ساز ایس ز ارتیل سه از استان بکرایتی است. دام یکی دان مخته سوقم. اون کات یکی دان گاهی زد. با مگرام، مگرام از تنها مدرو به دموکراتیا ده تنها مدرو است. پولی آنو تفس مخوایولی آن دموکراتیا را گرت سستی. رومیل زی مرت با ابسط را تولی کار که بیس جیب بیدن ده تونه سر را گذا. قلبی آنها دارن این سپیده بوده تا اودت سو بی، رامیل تا خب اما یه جوی بیتی داره که او خالص دام شکم نیست مدریس خات. این نوع سنی نگات مگونی قلق کرده تو خته بیت دار، اما زبان روی وی ساوبرت سایت کنات می دیستم. می کامی گرزل دکی خدا چه می آن رگورت کالیس رگورت دیدیس دار رگورت دیدو بیس مکلای واریس رامیل تا این سه قسمت از دکاور رو ایخال فت ستیلوب رگورت کالم در رگورت دیدم مونا خود کرد میسه تیک سبی رگور شاید لب مم دا داو پیری سپیده دا چهم نایری خالقی ای چهم نایری کاله بیده دبی ایم صد نیت رات مکس رگور شاید لب داو پیری سپیده ایم رگات سا نئولیبرالیسم است دموکراتیا دغیره بود کرد نئولیبرالیسم است ات که نی رگور سمکله واریش رایت کامود استیل بس آنو اکتیویستی است دام تایرلی سرچه و ایرایک نباید ایرولی نبی جبی راشید لب ات کرد ای قصد ایم تا پیروز بیشتر کامو تیله بدن. می داده ایت که این کامو تیله بدن ما این درس. مطلب باس آپا خو. او پر اول تو صورت که اگه ما این تیستی آریستورا گرداوالی نئولیبرالیسمی ساده دموکراتی سالیانسی خودا خواراری شست مطلب لی رگور موفق کاو تاوی سپلوت دموکراتیا نئولیبرالوری. ای ای نئولیبرالوری. خوش هم دگر میس کنم از کلیس خوب. کامر جوبا چه میکی تو خب بیا لیبرالو دموکراتیا سایو پروسوس داد که تو کنی از این روگرون دایر بزولس لیبرالوری دموکراتیا ایست شم تو خواب شد است از تابد لیبرالوری دموکراتیس زیری تادی دام تا و اینسترومنت بیخ دبا سشواله با این مسیرم اوتوریت ارولی پلیتیکا سبولت کات اردسته دبودن دست خوب آنهاشی همیشه ارگی مقالتیاری آمریکاشی مقالت دوزن ایسی سه سامارتلوس اینسترومنتولی رولی میسوس را آبورتیس آنتی آبورتیس کانونه بیدا آنتی کندرولی کانونه بی شنگم که شتابشی دبودن بولیگا آنو رگور شاید لب با لیبرال و متمکراتیم تا ویدایی تفاصیل میزگن رم تفیتون گاخته از خالی از اولیت ارولی تریست اسرگه بیس آن رگون دا ویبزولت آسی دام کوید ربود اسر تریست اسرگه فن تر مات کارکو لگیتیمات سیاکو تا لیبرال بیک اول توش که اومن بیان رم تو آما ساگر دا به مرچیل بی چهل بار مکت آن دست مگر آمیتی کنستیتیوت اسرگ سوار کوپتا آمیت از جوبس آم اوسامارت لوت اسرگ تا به مرچیل تا دا به لودت نیلی پروتیس بیت رو دیشب تلو تام قلا پرس so uh, the first question, um, this was about, actually, I cut it short because we were short of time. Um, what I mean very briefly is that, uh, look at it this way, there's a lot of evidence, and you're probably aware of that evidence, that, um, for instance, in Russia, for instance, uh, that it is essentially a state that relies on hydrocarbon oligarchs to a very big extent. So their interests dominate. From India, let me tell you that the Indian government, uh, Modi regime, the two biggest funders and backers and beneficiaries of the regime are two uh, hydrocarbon oligarchs, one of whom is actually, uh, you know, not just in India, he's transnational, he is busy trying to destroy the, he's a coal oligarch, uh, he is trying to destroy the uh, coral reef in Australia. He's he's destroying uh, you know stuff in uh, Myanmar and uh, many parts of the world. Now Ambani, the other guy, he is someone Modi's foreign policy. Modi said, uh, "Oh, I'm going to be neutral," which basically meant being pro-Russia. But he did it in order to say, "Okay, I need you know my people need cheap oil, and so I'm going to import oil from Russia. I have to because Indians need to get cheap oil." But you see the imports, the lion's share of those imports went to one single 
oligarch, one, one oligarch, Ambani, who is Modi's best pal. And the other uh, company to which it went is a Russian state-owned company in Modi's home state, uh, Nayara Energy, Rosneft uh, imprint. And that company was bought from another oligarch who is also Modi's best friend, uh, and it was a debt-ridden company, and this Russian company bought it. Now, there's a lot which I've written about in that article to show that these were essentially uh, very corrupt transactions uh, in which uh, state uh, money is basically going to uh, facilitate this. And Russia, uh, India today is helping Russian uh, oil and Russian economy function by violate and helping them to violate a variety of laws. But it doesn't just end there. It isn't just India and Russia. The books I mentioned, what they are showing is that a place like London, London right now is a center of the world's oligarchs, name it, including Yanukovych, who was uh, uh, to 2014 chased away from Ukraine. Uh, he has huge assets in London. Uh, the oligarch supporting him has huge assets in London. Uh, and you pick up any part of the world, whether it is the Africas, whether it's the Americas, whether it's here, you find that kind of a network where England's laws are such that uh, essentially it is wantingly, willingly playing. Uh. So the point is that these, uh, these various forces are working together for economic purposes. And what they are doing is it's an economy uh, which is basically a shadow, you know, he calls it money land because he says you enter that land and you're lost. You don't have a map and you can't make a map because it's all shell company, shell company, shell company. You don't know who owns what. So London, he says, these homes are basically house-shaped bank accounts. No one lives in them. And they are, they are owned by these youth. How does that link with democracy? See, the point is that these are not state-free actors. They are state-enabled and state-backed actors and they prefer the authoritarian regimes because that works for them much better. So uh, I, I won't go into more details here except to say that uh, you know if you look at Dogen for instance, you said Dogen is not really backed by all this. He's, he's, it, it's, a, it's an anti-liberal kind of ideolo ideological backlash. But you just saw the Russian embassy stuff quoting Dogen. So clearly there is a, uh, you know, it is not only ideological, it is something which is a state-backed ideology. It isn't just one among many other, it's not just an ideological war here. Uh, it is to do with state policy, which with how uh, these people want to remake the world. So I think uh, that was my point, and the point that we can't fight. If we want to fight climate change, we have to fight these oligarchs. If we want to fight the anti-democrats, we have to also fight these oligarchs. So we have to kind of get our act together and see these as connected, and rather than seeing everything as West versus the rest. So you know, which is which is happening so much uh, in so much of the world. Okay. Uh, the second question was about a very good question, which I. I'm not sure I have a satisfactory answer to, uh, but that's the question, isn't it? That if populist and authoritarian ideas are popular, then what do we do? What is our answer? And uh, I, I agree with you that this is something every day when I wake up in the morning in India and look at the news, or I hear from you know friends about what has happened in their part of the world in India, um, I grapple with this every day. Because I, you know, my instinct is to say, you know, people are seriously shitty, you know. Oh my God, you know, what on earth? Is, there's something inherently wrong with people. That's the first instinct, I won't lie to you. But then I remember that, you know, the very fact that we have uh, whatever rights we have are because people have fought for them. And that's people too, right? So I think that, um, Democracy is something, you know, it's about how we understand it. And uh, the populist authoritarian forces call out to the worst fears and the worst prejudices in, in people. And I think that the same people also have other better impulses, better instincts, instincts of empathy and solidarity and, uh, you know, uh, the, the wish for a better life for themselves, just a better life for ordinary people, right? That is also a human attribute. So we have to, I think, politically find ways of 
speaking to that individual and not thinking that this moment in which this uh, person is uh, uh, voting for the authoritarian and the bigot is the only place where that, that person or that community is frozen. I think that we have to believe that change is possible and speak to other instincts in people. Um, and, and one part of that, I think, is to remember that democ you know, they want democracy to be majoritarianism. Whatever the majority says is democracy. But that's the idea. You know, when I say liberal democracy, I, it's, a, it's a very loose and ill-used term. But basically what I mean is the idea that a majority or the a power, you know, society, suppose I am alone in the room as a queer person. And if my entire community, my entire village says that I'm abnormal and I have to be, you know, stripped, stripped and paraded or something, which happens in India to women and uh, queer people and so on and uh, oppressed castes, then, um, you know, it doesn't mean that that's democratic, right? Because just the fact that the majority says that doesn't make it right. So uh, then democracy becomes about protecting certain principles, certain individual rights, inherent rights as human beings, which is why, although it's not popular on the left, I'm a firm believer in defending the concept of human rights and the concept of uh, democracy and the uni universal declaration of human rights. You know, that's my banner these days. Um, okay, the third one is about how, you know, democracy and neoliberalism. Um, see, I think uh, to some extent, you know, you're right. Neoliberalism is deeply anti-democratic, in fact, because neoliberalism basically says that you don't have an inherent right to food, to jobs, to, to, to decent wages, to education, to, uh, you know, uh, what is it, uh, healthcare and so on, right? So if I have inherent rights as a human being, and those are inherent rights too, and neoliberal, uh, basically the neoliberal uh, ideology and uh, political economy says I don't, I believe that is anti-democratic, not democratic. But to you and to the next question, uh, both I would say that, look, when I say democracy, I think that we need to start we need to stop thinking of democracy as a form of state, which has irregular elections and this. That's a bare minimum. That's OK. But you see, it's not, you know, we keep thinking about democracy as capitalist democracy, or is it, uh, you know, it, there's always a prefix. But I, the prefix essentially is about the nature of the state. I don't think it's, it's, democracy doesn't live in the state. It lives in people. So I, you know, I think the yardstick we need to have is, Democracy is not an end goal. It's a process. Are people free to fight for more democracy? To fight for the right to food and the right to education and right to healthcare? They can't do that in China. Okay, they can't do that in Russia. They can do it for now in India, although they're getting picked up and, uh, you know, it's, we, we are, we are fast going uh, in, the, in the way of the other states I mentioned. In the USA also, uh, there are forces that want to take USA that way, and there are fights against it, right? So I'm not saying that the institutions of the court or the institutions of the, you know, the, the uh, bureaucracy or the, or the legislature and all are, perf are defenders of democracy. All I'm saying is that the acknowledgement of certain rights as universally available to anyone in every country that is a bare minimum where you, you know, that's a ground which people before us have fought for. And you can't pull that carpet out from under us. We have to stand on that ground and fight for better, fight for more. Um, so the fourth question also similarly, so liberal in, so as I, uh, you're absolutely right, the example of the Supreme Court is a great one. But I think that in every, um, even in a Marxist sense, basically you talk about class struggle inside parliament, class struggle inside institutions. And I think that uh, basically the institutions of uh, parliamentary democracy as well as judiciary and even media and everything, um, you're going to have those impulses there, anti-democratic impulses. And, uh, you know, the courts have... But I think that the recognition that that is a backward step in a large number of people in America where that has become an election issue, where people are you know, on the streets against it. For me, that is the guarantor of democracy. 
the likes of my, you know, the external affairs minister in my country, Modi's uh, external affairs minister, very smart man, Jai Shankar. He says, oh, look at, you know, uh, police are shooting black people in the streets of uh, America, uh, you know, so who are they to lecture us on democracy? And he gets a lot of uh, applause and so on, including from uh, members of the Muslim community in India who are getting shot in the streets in India. Okay. So the point is that why is he saying that? You see, of course they are getting shot. Nobody is saying the American state is wonderfully democratic. Of course it's not. But the fact is that whatever space there is there, whatever flawed idea of democracy and rights there is, is something which the civil liberties movement in America has fought for and won. Even something as simple as the right to vote. The same in India. Dalits of the oppressed castes had to fight f to use the right to vote that they had in legal on paper. And they had to die for that. Uh, it is those struggles that create democracy and that's what the struggles today are creating democracy as well.